this is the Baconator. Um, fries, chicken nuggets, JBC, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I know I seem kind of grumpy right now, but I'm actually really happy inside. <laughs> um, I'm just really hungover. Um, and I had to get something fatty and salty to eat. My brain is not even functioning right now. I don't even know how I can even talk. I don't even know why I'm filming, but I figured it would be best to just film me the day after drinking tons of alcohol um, because I tend to eat a lot and I like to eat fast food obviously anything salty oh my god do you see these bags I'm really tired I really am um, uh, at least they're expensive bags hmm Wendy's has the best ranch. Mm. It's hitting the spot. My vanilla frosty. Mm. Mm. So good. Mm. Wendy's fries. Mmm. Mmm. I love salty and sweet. Mmm. This baconator is giving me life right now. My body seriously can't recover anymore. It's not, it's definitely not the same as it was 10 years ago. You know, when I go out, 
I really, I mean, I, look, I work hard. I really do. I work hard and I play hard. I mean, I really, truly believe in that. But when I play hard, I play really pretty hard. And today's the day, you know, right now is proof of that. That I, pay, I play way too hard. Yeah, I went out last night um, with my friends at a restaurant. We had one too many drinks. And then we went to a bar down the street. Super crowded. Stayed there till they closed. Oh my God. It was like 2, 3 a.m. Oh God. Ah. I really, I had so much fun though. Like I had a good time. Don't think I didn't. I really didn't want to leave the club or the bar. I mean, but it's funny when the lights go on, ugh, you really see everyone and how messy everyone really looks. And everyone's scattering around like roaches. Here's the thing though, I just, I never know when to just stop, you know, and just have a few drinks and just enjoy a nice little buzz and not go overboard. But like I said, you know, when I work hard, I really truly want to play hard. And these, you know, when I do do it, it's my only time to actually have fun because, you know, in the next few days, I'll probably have some uh, even more busy weeks. So I really try to get it in one day whenever I can. But I always have a lot of regret, even when I'm at the bar, you know? It's funny because I'll go to the restroom and, uh, you know, I'll pee or whatever. But it's funny for guys, when we when we have to urinate, we're, we're seriously staring at a wall, you know? So while I'm peeing, I'm just looking at this wall, trying to piss, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, you are not 21 anymore. Stop, stop trying so hard. You're fucking tired. Just stay home, relax. Stop trying to be cute. Stop going out, stop getting crazy. I, I seriously tell myself this all the time these days when I go out, you know? And then once I'm done, you know, peeing, I go to, you know, to wash my hands and I'm looking straight at myself in the mirror, super drunk, just looking at myself, trying to steady and just repeating the same things I said you're an old bitch and you need to stop acting like you're young and cute again because you're not. Stop drinking. It's like I seriously tell myself to stop drinking. But once I'm done in the restroom and I walk back outside, guess what? I see my friends. Guess what? I have another drink ready for me. Thank you, friend, for buying that for me. And now it just gets wild and out of control. And this is what happens. It's like a vicious cycle that happens over and over again, at least once a month. Mmm, mm, so good. Mmm. I 
I can feel the oil. All over my lips. That's a good thing. Mm. Mm. It's giving me energy. Hmm. Ketchup. Uh, that's what happens. Whenever I do get drunk though, and I get home, I really do try to relax. Um, like yesterday I actually tried to take, um, what is it? A nice little, nice little bath, right? Um, I had my Epsom salt. I had kind of those scented, um, I'm sorry, bath bombs or whatever it is. You just throw it in to the tub and it just kind of turns, it fizzles, turns crazy colors. Anyways, it smells great. So I have some of those. But anyways, it's funny because whenever you watch movies and you see people take these baths or whatever, they're just basically trying to relax with their glass of wine or whatever and just kind of the, uh, just looking like they're having a good time, right? Just relaxing. But I don't know what it is, or maybe it's just me, or maybe it's my tub, but it is not as relaxing as they make it seem. I am trying to lie in this tub, right? And this tub is not that big, so my knees have to bend like that. And my back starts to hurt, and it's just like, what? These movies are fucking lying. Like, it just is not comfortable at all. Oh, I even tried to roll a towel and put it behind my neck. It, it just wasn't going to work. I mean, I tried it for what, like 15 minutes? And this happens every single time. Like, I know that it hurts me, but I keep on doing it because it just sounds so good, right? It just sounds so good when you're, when you're kind of drunk as hell and you just want to relax. By the way, I never told you that when, when I'm drunk, I actually remember everything. I... I never black out. I actually do remember all the details. It's crazy. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't I don't know if you're the same way, but I can. Hmm. And it's, and when I am drunk, and when I drink, I get super horny too. 
like super horny. I've actually, with the tub too, and trying to relax and, you know, taking a nice little, a little bath, um, uh, I tried masturbating a few times, but it doesn't work. It, it just doesn't work. Think about it. I mean, if you're like going like this, you know, and there's water, it just, it gets really splashy. Like it just doesn't work. See, this is, this is when I actually want to be a woman, you know, it, it's just, it's easier that way. I could just get myself off using, I don't know, what do you guys use? Oh, the shower head. You can use that. Um, have some toys, you know, surrounding you, battery operated. Don't have anything that plugs into the wall. I don't want to find out that you got electrocuted. But, oh my god, I would go to town. That sounds so good. Glass of wine, um, lying back in a warm... Ah, in a warm bath and just masturbating. <laughs> oh my god, if I was a woman, I would do it all the time. But anyways, yeah, that doesn't work for men. Just the water. So then, if, if I can't, usually I, you know, I try, but I stop. When I'm out of the shower, though, I, I actually beg my boyfriend to have sex with me. Like a child. Yeah, that's spit. See, stop talking and eating, but I can't stop talking. Um, no, I beg him like a child, like, please, please have sex with me, like that. Like a drunk, horny little teenager. And it's funny because he feels really bad about it because he really... You know when you look at a drunk person, you kind of feel sorry for them. Like you just want to take care of them and baby them, kind of just pet their back. You know, like, I mean, just pet their back like you're a dog. Rub their back and just trying to make them feel better. And that's why he would, he usually does that to me too. He like just wants to take care of me. He doesn't feel horny looking at me, this nasty little drunk creature on the floor begging for sex. Like that's not sexy to him. Of course, I don't think that's sexy to anyone, but so he's not in the mood, you know? So it's just really funny. He'll do it anyway, but It's just so forced. It's not like it really is not sexy at all. Like he won't do things if I ask him to. Because when I ask you to grab my hair, you need to fucking fucking grab my hair, like yank it till it's like a, just a little painful, you know. But good painful. My friends like my friends and I like to say, choke me, but don't kill me. That's how I like it. But he won't do that because he's afraid of hurting me because I'm in a vulnerable state. Whatever, I don't care. Just violence is okay with my consent. What a mess. So to wrap that story up, I basically just fall asleep and I don't even, I don't even get off. And then fast forward, I'm eating some sort of freaking fast food the next day. Fast food the next day. Story of my life.
This is a sad looking burger. Wendy's has always looked really sad to me. It just looks sad, but it tastes really good. I was worse though when I was single. When I was single, man. Way back in the day, you know, I remember just always having fun, going out, you know, getting a little bit of, getting a little buzzed, whatever. But then when I'd get home, you know, just kind of relax a little bit, you know, you know how they do it today, how people go through their phones and look for their a booty call, right? You're just going down your list and seeing exactly who's available or who's, who's up at the moment. But yeah, I would do that. Actually, back in the day, we had to actually live, quite literally call them. We couldn't, we could text, but that, that just wasn't really popular. It was a different approach. But anyways, yeah, so you would, you would actually give them a call. And I just remember always doing that. Every single night, it was, it was terrible. It was exciting at first because, you know, like I said, when you drink, you get horny. You, you just want to get off, right? So it's exciting at first. You're like, yeah, I'm going to get some. And then quite literally when you when you're done and you're leaving that person's place, you just feel so disgusting. You know, you feel just, you go through this kind of wave of self-hate or these emotions. It was funny because I remember just sitting in my car, you know, Usually just sitting in my car for a few minutes, just thinking about Just thinking about, man, my mom raised me well Or she raised me right, and look what I'm doing Sharing my genitals to the world, like What am I doing? It was just a lot of self-reflection, it was just a lot of self-regret, like And I, was a, I would always smell my hands. You can still smell dick on it. And I remember always rolling my windows down and blasting the music. I think I did that honestly to drown out my thoughts. I really felt horrible. You know, it's like, it's funny because when you're done having sex with these, you know, these people that you know, your acquaintances or whether you're fuck buddies, you just... You quite just you, you just literally pull up your pants, put on your clothes, and leave. There are no emotions whatsoever. Hmm.
I love sex. I really do. You guys, I don't talk about sex just to be funny about it. I really, I really do talk about it with a purpose of education. Have you not, have you not thought about how much sex, how much you've learned about yourself through sex? Because you do, you really learn a lot about yourself. And what I mean by that is you, you really understand what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy. You understand what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. And um, through sex too, I mean, there's uh, being safe. It's important to be safe. It's important to know when someone's being too pushy. There's just so many things about it, right? But I just think it's, I, th I think it's so important to talk about. And I really am, it really makes me sad if someone's maybe too afraid to express themselves in that way because society has made sex so taboo. I just think it's unfortunate because um, in classrooms or education, you know, they, te they teach you sex education and how to have safe sex and all that good stuff or practice safe sex, but they don't really, they don't really teach you anything that I would think is, I don't think you can learn something in class that you can learn with actually having sex or engaging in the activity. You'd be surprised how much you learn about yourself. It's just something that we, we don't consciously think about or we don't really consider, you know, but it kind of just comes up. Like it, it, we just know what we like and what we don't like. Like who would have known that my nipples were going to be that sensitive? You know, my nipples until someone decided to, to suck the shit out of them. Now I know they're my, my favorite thing. Please touch my nipples. It'll get me crazy. I'll be screaming. <laughs> it's funny that way. And it's funny because y have you not noticed that maybe in your past experiences with different partners that some of them you're willing to do more of something, some of them you aren't willing to do very much with? And that, that depends on, you know, the level of attraction or sexual attraction. Um, that's very important, actually. But someone you love, right, compared to someone you're just kind of just like a random fuck buddy, right? There's a difference. I don't think there's a different feeling. You know what I'm talking about. Um, but sometimes the person that you love, I mean, if, if that person asks you to do something, I think you're more likely to do it. Why? Because you want to make them happy, right? Even though you might not be into it, but you're okay with it. No one's going to get hurt. Um, but that, that's how you really learn about yourself. That's how you explore your body and your senses and what, what works for you. And speaking of levels of attraction, from my past, I'm talking about my personal experience, not saying this is a general thing. I found that I had better sex with average looking people compared to the more attractive ones. Like, I really mean it. I don't know what it is about the cute guy, the really cute guys that I've met and hooked up with. They, they, t they tend to be a bit more cautious or they seem cautious in bed, very clean, very PG 13. It's just not, one of the one of the guys when he came he started to giggle and I, I didn't understand why he would giggle every sim, single time he came and I just stopped hooking up with him I was like stop giggling you're like turning me off like that's not sexy stop giggling are you nervous or something are you scared you're killing the mood no it just seems a bit vanilla I don't know the sex but it's the um, it's kind of like the average ones that have a lot of confidence, you know? I mean, they're not even average. There has to be obviously some sexual attraction, but compared to the other ones, they're maybe, may not be supermodels. I don't know, whatever. 
but they, holy fucking hell, are the best in bed. They're just nasty. I prefer the nasty. Mmm. And if you have to know, I'm more attracted to confidence than I am with looks. Great. You look good too? Icing on the cake. But confidence is what turns me on. I actually remember a lot of times my friends would tell me, oh, you're dating him? I'm surprised. I don't like that reaction. I never liked that reaction. But that's the thing they don't understand is that this person that I'm hooking up with or dating right now makes me laugh, has tons of confidence, carries himself so well. I could care less if he's overweight. I could care less if he's skinny. I, I could care, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if he has long hair, I don't care. But if he makes me laugh, legs are open. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. I need to shut the fuck up and just go to sleep. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm not sure if the food looked good to you, but it was good to me because I needed that oil just to keep me going. Anyways, have a lot of sex, enjoy yourselves. Don't let your dogs watch you while you're having sex, because that's awkward. Um, I'm gonna go to sleep now. I'll see you, I'll see you when I'm better and more alive and just more sophisticated, because this is messy. Bye guys.